Would you like a free lunch? Computers are finite physical systems, so they ultimately have limits, such as memory capacity, processing speed, and energy usage. Regarding energy consumption, in the 1960s, physicist Rolf Landauer discovered a deep relationship between computation and thermodynamics. The Landauer principle roughly states that irreversible operations increase the net entropy of the system, or more precisely, the energy of one bit of information is greater than or equal to Boltzmann's constant, which is the entropy defined in terms of joules per Kelvin, multiplied by the temperature in Kelvin, times the natural log of two, which is a fixed number approximately equal to this. This relationship therefore sets a limit on the minimum entropy needed to perform one operation. In a previous video, I discussed basic redstone logic gates. These are based on the same architectural principles that your computer is built from. With an irreversible system, you cannot tell what the inputs are doing simply by observing the output. Take for example an AND gate. There are three configurations for which the output will be off. Both inputs could be off. The first one is on, but the second one is off, or the second one is on and the first one is off. The only situation in which the output will be on is if both inputs are on. Merely noting that the output is off is not enough to tell you which of the three options is true. Or take, for example, a ZOR gate, where there are two possibilities for the output to be off. Both inputs could be off, or both inputs could be on. And there's two possibilities for the output being on. The first input could be off and the second one on, or the first one can be on and the second one is off. These are examples of irreversibility. Some information has been lost in the system. It's unidirectional. You can't go back. And this loss of information must come at a cost, usually at the expense of waste heat. This is typically why computers come installed with a fan to keep them cool. However, there's a whole class of logic gates that are reversible and therefore not subject to Landauer's limit. In classical architecture, the simplest example is the NOT gate. You can know what the input is just by observing the output. If the output is on, the input is off, and if the output is off, the input is on. There is a one-to-one -one mapping, and that's the key to reversible logic, to have the same number of inputs and outputs. I wanted to better understand how these systems worked. I couldn't really find anyone else making them in, in Minecraft specifically, or if there is, I didn't see any. So I thought I could try and build one myself. I made three examples already off camera because I was just playing around with them to see if I could even do it as a proof of concept. But now that I think they work, I'm considering taking it to another level and maybe making a video about it. First one I made is a Fredkin gate. How a Fredkin gate works is if this first input is on, then the first output will be on. However, if one of the other two inputs are on and the first input is on, it will swap them. So. Just to take an example, if this is on, then the first output will be on. However, if I turn one of these on, the, the middle one doesn't go to the middle one to the middle output. It goes to the last output. It swaps it because the first one is on. If I turn the first one off, then the middle one will go to the middle output. So these last two only swap if the first input is on. So if I turn this one off and the last one on, then the middle output should be on. And this is reversible because just by knowing what the three outputs are, you can instantly know what the three inputs are. So this was the first one I tried to build. It's basically made up of smaller classical gates, such as we have a ZOR gate here, we have an AND gate here, and then two more ZOR gates here. The second reversible gate that I tried to build is a Toffoli gate or a controlled controlled not gate. The way this one works is if the first two inputs are on, then it will invert the last output. So if these two are on, then the last one will also be on. However, if I turn this last input on, then the last output will be off. Because these first two are on, it inverts the last one. However, if I turn one of these first two off, then this one will go through as normal. And at least to me, this one seemed a little bit simpler than the Fredkin gate. I only put one AND gate here and a ZOR gate here. And then lastly, I just built another Fredkin gate, except I try to make it a little bit more compact than the first one, because the, the first one I built was a bit long, so I try to make it a little bit cleaner. So what I would like to do is I've been thinking about building a calculator based solely on Fredkin gates. Well, maybe not a full-fledged calculator, just a 3-bit adder to start off. You know, baby steps. So I'm going to be basing my design off of this diagram here, 
from this paper. I don't know if I'll be able to do it, but I, ju I just want to try. So since I already have one Fred can get here, I basically just need to repeat this pattern four more times. <laughs> so that'll be fun. Now, the reason anyone would want to build one of these in Minecraft, I have no idea. I'm, I'm just doing this for fun. But I, I guess the reason it has any significance at all um, is because there's something called Kumi's Law, um, which is similar to Moore's Law, where Moore, you know Moore's Law is basically the observation that the number of transistors um, that can be packed into an integrated circuit doubles roughly every two years. But Comey's law is the observation that the amount of computations you get per joule of energy doubles roughly every one and a half years. But this has slowed to about every two and a half years since the year 2000, I think. And you can only miniaturize transistors so much before reaching atomic scales where weird quantum effects like tunneling and stuff start to take over. And if the energy doubling continues at the current rate, I think it's predicted that it'll reach the Landauer limit by 2080. But of course that's assuming it won't slow down any further, in which case it might be a bit longer. And what that all means is we cannot continue to use irreversible architecture and have an efficiency doubling effect forever without running into this barrier. However, with reversible computing, this is uh, not subject to the slings and arrows of Landauer's limit. So I suspect that a lot more research and development will be done on this in the future. Okay, I I think I made the second one. I'm not entirely sure, so I need to test it. Just so if this is on, wait. Oh, I need to put repeaters in. Just three more to go. I should also note that some people have challenged the Landauer principle for being, you know, either either circular and trivial or just simply false. Um, I, I've tried reading the papers going back and forth on this debate. But frankly, I just want to make a YouTube video. This is definitely not my area of expertise. I'm, I'm no computer scientist or physicist, and I certainly ain't no rocket surgeon. So take all this with a huge grain of salt. I'm just a YouTuber, bruh. I play a funny block game. I'm just doing this for the views. You know, I say for the views as if I'm expecting a sudden surge of interest in uh, reversible logic gates to come flooding to my video. But if you are one of those people, have you considered liking and subscribing? Why isn't this one working? Uh, what, what did I mess up? Oh. There's not redstone dust on the top of those Zor gates. I'm stupid. I just need to build two more. And one major other consideration about reversible computing is that I believe if a proper computer is to have no loss of energy due to no loss of information, it must be reversible at all scales. So, you know, not, not just at the level of logic gates, transistors, and hardware, but also at the higher level of the programs as well. Well, I, I still think it takes some work to flip a bit, so technically there's probably still some lower physical bound, um, but there's just no energy cost due to irreversibility. Okay, I think I have all of them basically... I have one, two, three, four, five. Okay, perfect. Now I just need to connect them up correctly. And you know, the late uh, Freeman Dyson, uh, you know, the same guy who came up with the, the Dyson Sphere idea, well, he also came up with an idea for an eternal intelligence. That as the universe gets older and the stars start flickering out and the cosmos gets colder and colder, a theoretical digital mind or an artificial intelligence could store a finite amount of energy and then you use half of that energy to power a thought and then hibernate to radiate away excess heat and then when the universe cools enough for another computation expend another half of the remaining energy and then continue this process ad infinitum. Of course there are several problems with this because uh, Dyson's original proposal, I think, assumes an open geometry of space. But as far as I know, most experimental measurements show that our universe to be locally flat. And now there are several uh, solutions to the flatness problem, uh, the most common being you know, cosmic inflation that would allow the universe to have any shape. But because it has expanded so rapidly, we just happen to live in a region that appears to be locally flat. 
much like how the uh, wide open fields of Kansas look flat, even though the earth itself is round. I honestly don't know how all of all of this uh, specifically affects the thought experiment, but regardless, the amount of usable energy in the universe will eventually dip below Landauer's limit. And if these eternal intelligences are based on irreversible computing, then I guess they won't be so eternal after all. And this basic concept of performing computations at the end of the universe was actually used in a recent paper as a solution to the Fermi paradox. Because if you recall the Landauer equation, the uh, energy is re also related to temperature. So at half the temperature, you can get double the efficiency per joule of energy. So for an advanced civilization that wants to maximize its energy usage, it would be more efficient to acetivize now during the warm period and then to wake up when the universe cools sufficiently enough. In other words, the reason we don't see any aliens is because they are slumbering until the end of time. Now this hypothesis has also been criticized. Um, I, I think it's been pointed out that there are enough heat reservoirs in the present universe to dissipate one's excess heat into such that waiting until the black hole era offers a uh, little incentive to become dormant. Um, I'm not entirely sure if I got all the connections correct. It's a three bit adder, so I so the three bits is should be this input here and this input here and this one here. Okay. So zero plus zero plus zero equals zero. If I do one wait, I think I think these are backwards. So, so oh see so you read it you read it from this direction. So Zero, 01 is 1 so 0 plus 0 plus 1 equals 1 which in binary is 0 1 if i do 1 plus 1 i should get 2 which in binary is 1 0 something is not right here oh wait i need i need repeaters there we go <laughs> i just needed repeaters in the right place okay um and if i have all three on then I should get 1, 1, which is 3 in binary, because 1 plus 1 plus 1 equals 3. I, I think it worked. Nice. I want to make it a, like, a, a little more... Maybe if I can get like the, the inputs closer to the outputs. Okay, so now I have them a bit closer together, so 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. Make sure her just make sure all of them work. Okay, so one and one. Okay, yeah. The, there's some delay probably because of all the repeaters that add add a bit of delay to it. And then this should be two, which would be that one would be on and off. Okay. And then both of them should be on. Yep. I kind of want to make a, a a converter that converts this because the output is only in binary. Um, but I kind of want to make it into decimal. Let me, th let me think about this. Oops. Perfect. Okay, now I have the display. Now I just need to convert binary into decimal. Okay, so I think I got it working. Whoops. Um, so zero plus zero plus zero is zero. Okay, it, it takes a little bit of time to calculate. Um, one plus zero plus zero should be one. Might take a little bit. One. Okay, and then one plus one plus zero it should be two. There we go. And then one plus one plus one equals three. Perfect. So there you have it. A three bit adder made completely of reversible Fredkin gates. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like, maybe consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.